Thank you for joining this session um, on how to accelerate advanced nuclear technology deployment with, uh, by leveraging the best of two different worlds, so nuclear engineering and digital solutions. In this session, we are going to talk about model-based system engineering and virtual twins. But let me first introduce the two main speakers of this session. So Benjamin Baudouin from uh, ASYSTEM. Benjamin will share with us his learnings as a system engineer involved in modular and advanced reactor projects. And Thomas Marchand from Dassault System is a consultant in model-based system engineering and system engineering. And he will bring his knowledge from other manufacturing industries. So back to the main topic of this session, uh, how to accelerate the deployment of advanced nuclear technologies like modular reactors. All companies developing uh, advanced modular reactors face the same challenges, meaning that the first challenge is what is the right architecture for my product? As a um, system architect, am I making the right decision? The next challenge is the time to market. What can I do to be the first on the market and to win the market? How can I take into consideration the complete life cycle of a facility I'm designing? But also, how can I ensure that my modular reactor can be manufactured in a facility and delivered on site efficiently? And the last challenge is, of course, nuclear safety. How can I ensure that I will be able to accelerate the regulatory processes from standard design approval to license to operate? And the virtual twin is a key asset to address these challenges. When we talk about a virtual twin, so virtual twin are based on proven digital technologies some of them, like modeling and simulation or digital mockup and beam, are already well deployed in the nuclear industry. But others, like model-based system engineering or operational virtual twin, are still emerging in the nuclear industry. And yet, I think that we can learn a lot from other manufacturing industries, like aerospace and automotive, who have already deployed and benefit from these technologies. Today, when you look at these industries, they, they were able to transform the way they design, manufacture, deliver, and operate manufactured products. We, as a nuclear industry, can do the same and learn the best practices from these industries. But as there are some specificities in the nuclear industry, we also have to adapt these learnings and digital technologies to the needs of our industry. And this is why it's important to uh, leverage the uh, synergy between nuclear engineering and software development and solution providers. So you have to, to leverage the best of a software provider like Dassault System that can uh, deliver to you the best technologies which are industry proven and based on industry standards and also bring to you the best practices from other industries and a nuclear engineering company like a system that have the know-how of how to engineer this kind of complex products. So regarding a system side, we are a uh, nuclear engineering company of 57 years of age. Uh, so this expertise allows us to bring best engineering practices and processes uh, from nuclear industry and it allows us to structure uh, methods and processes uh, to project specific needs. And besides, uh, in our system, we have a uh, mindset which is engineering powered by digital. So we have already been facing the challenges of deploying such a tooling ecosystem on specific projects, different projects and different, for different scopes. And then it allows us to provide some expertise to define what is a virtual twin, I mean functionally, to build it and to maintain it uh, in order that it remains efficient for its main users. So before giving life, so to say, to a virtual twin, uh, we need to rely on a, a core robust skeleton of fundamental processes. So here we have highlighted uh, six of them. So we have requirement management, system architecture, 
safety analysis, we will come back on these two later on in the presentation. Uh, 3D modeling, configuration management, and interface management. So these are six fundamental processes, but why? Because they structure the whole project, the whole engineering project. They involve many stakeholders and not only the design teams, and they enable to structure other processes that will come up uh, later on in the project. Um, and why this, so these processes are kind of standardized in uh, other uh, industrial sectors, so we need to somehow address the specificities of the nuclear industry. And in, to do that, we need to somehow develop overlay applications for these processes. And this is why a synergy between engineering company and a software editor makes sense. So let's uh, introduce our concrete use case here. So Thomas uh, will introduce uh, the, the use case example with a virtual twin, but let me first introduce the, the technological uh, scope. So we based our example on a existing and mature uh, design. So it's a technology uh, based on the high temperature gas reactor concept. So here you have a view of the main power system, which is composed of a uh, reactor module, heat exchanger module on the right, and a uh, turbine generator module on the left. So it's a direct uh, gas cycle. And for the sake of this presentation, we were going to have a focus on a specific system, uh, which is an auxiliary system of the plant, the reactor cavity uh, cooling system. So in this presentation, we will first introduce the specifics of the nuclear uh, industry in the functional analysis process. And then we will present how we have implemented it uh, together in our tool, MBC tool, um, Katia Magic. And eventually we will introduce um, how we have used the digital continuity from system architecture to this, uh, the detailed design with the 3D experience platform. Okay, so thank you, Thomas. Let's come back to the RCCS, so the reactor cavity cooling system. So here you have a very simplified schematic overview of the, of the system. So you have the reactor pressure vessel, which is located in the cavity. And somehow you will have uh, radiative heat transfer from the reactor pressure vessel to the cavity. So you need to remove the heat uh, from the cavity. And you have to imagine that the cavity itself is surrounded by cooling panels that, that are made up of pipes and, um, and, uh, and, uh, and the heat is extracted uh, with using water. So it's a water-cooled uh, concept here. So um, let's identify more clearly the different functions of the system in different operational situations. And for it, let's use functional analysis. So first, let's have a step back and see the system as a whole. And let's take the normal operation situation. So in this situation, you have, of course, the reactor unit system that generates heat uh, from nuclear reaction. Uh, and this heat is then converted to power by the power conversion system that provides back the coolant to the reactor unit. So it's the basic uh, the classical cooling loop. Uh, but in the same time, you need to remove heat from cavity uh, to the main heat sink. So that's, that's one of the functions of the reactor cavity cooling system. And to remove the heat to the environment, it relies on the main heat sink system that is an active system. So it needs power supply. So this is the typical situation, normal operation. Now we are going to postulate uh, an accidental operation. So we are going to postulate the loss of the power convention system and the power grid. Uh, the first assumption that we are making is that there is a reactor trip. So the reactor goes to the safe state. And so the, the nuclear chain reaction is stopped, but still you need to, to remove decay heat from the reactor. So as you lose your, your, power, your power grid, you lose basically your main heat sink system and we have just lost our power, power conduction system. So you need somehow to have uh, the whole system reconfigured. Uh, so we need, for example, for this, to mitigate this scenario, we need a backup cooling tower to remove the heat from the RCCS to the environment. And this backup cooling tower is powered supplied by emergency diesel. Uh, and in this situation, the reactor 
cavity cooling system has to remove all the decay heat uh, from cavity to the backup cooling tower. So the, the heat load is quite different. Um, to do that, you need somehow a support function, uh, which is the tank level, the water tank level monitoring. So it's a support function that allows uh, to, 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 to monitor the availability of the safety feature, which is the core uh, reheat removal, which is the function of the reactor co cavity cooling system. And this safety feature of the RCCS contributes to the fundamental safety function, which is core heat removal. So let's sum up. Uh, from this example, we can obtain a very simplified data model of safety. With so, data model is like concepts and relationships and relationships between these concepts. So this uh, data model highlights kind of two worlds. Uh, the first world is the world of functions. So we have safety functional concepts that are used to mitigate uh, situation at the plant level. And we have the world of disciplines, which is the world of systems, of components, so like logical, physical world. And we need somehow to uh, make sure that the physical world implements uh, what has been uh, required in the world of function. So we need to maintain traceability and consistency between these two worlds. So, um, what we have presented here is a very simplified approach through functional analysis. But of course, for a real project, there is a great amount of data, of objects that will have to be manipulated. Uh, you need to imagine that you have hundreds of systems, thousands of functions, hundreds of initiators, and so on. So it becomes quite complex to manage all this uh, amount of data. Uh, with traditional approach. So this is where the virtual twin comes up and it can bring you a support in centralizing the information, in enhancing communication, in improving data traceability and consistency. All right? But still, you need somehow to use uh, the specific vocabulary, the specific terms of the safety domain. And this is why we need somehow to have a safety viewpoint in the virtual twin in order to handle this business process. Um, and so here we are just taking one example, which is uh, the safety process. And you need to imagine that you have to somehow apply the same approach for each of the core processes have, I have mentioned before, in order to highlight the data structure that is really needed uh, to address the safety, the nuclear specificities. So speaking about virtual twin, Let's dive in uh, the 3D experience platform and Katia Magic in particular. So here is our uh, system engineering portfolio. And we have highlighted uh, the main M MBC processes, the model-based system engineering processes, where Katia Magic brings the most value. So first, we will use it at uh, the system of system level for what we call mission modeling and uh, or we call it also a business process analysis. And then we move uh, to the system engineering level, uh, where we will use Katia Magic for the functional uh, analysis and then the logical architecture of the system. And um, for that part, it's worth to notice that we use the tool is based on the SysML standard. And it's quite important because when we follow the standard, we are more open and we can share uh, more easily the, the data with other applications. And that's a key point for the digital continuity. Um, and then, eventually, we go from the system level to the component or subsystem levels. And for that part, we switch from the Katia Magic uh, tool, where we, we are working on the architecture. We move to the 3D experience platform, where we will start the detailed design for each specific discipline, such as the fluidic, mechanical, or other electrical uh, discipline. And this is what we have done together with our system on uh, our use case uh, with the RCCS uh, system. But before that, just to mention that Katia Magic is not only a tool, it's also a methodology. And uh, so when we propose uh, Katia Magic and the 3D experience platform, we have the uh, generic methodology that can be applied in every industry. It's based again on, on the pure CSML. But uh, as CSML is open, we have it can be extended, and this is 
what we did. And yeah, thank you, Thomas. So this is what we did. We have added a specific uh, nuclear safety viewpoint in Katia Magic, uh, based on our system nuclear safety knowledge, and to address some of the functional safety stakes. And this is what we're going to present uh, right now. So I will give you some examples of MBSC activities in Katia Magic. So we'll talk about product breakdown structure, uh, how we can build a functional mitigation scenario, and how we can somehow build a traceability map, so kind of graph between high-level safety concepts to conceptual equipment traceability, to conceptual equipment. So uh, let's go for it. So here you have a view of the overall grid, and uh, we will see how we can build a product breakdown structure, which is really the, the backbone of uh, the NPP. So every node here of the structure, every system, is an object that can be handled in different representations, such as a, a mitigation scenario. Uh, so let's talk about now of uh, the, the safety features and mitigation scenarios. So we can build here uh, a real table containing postulated initiating events. So each of the objects here is a real object. So we can, you can have some attributes and we can make connections with other objects in the tool. Uh, and this is what we did. We can connect uh, this object to uh, what we call safety feature groups uh, that are functional objects that uh, allow to represent uh, a mitigation risk. So here, um, uh, sorry, so, uh, so this uh, functional safety group uh, uh, has, to, has to mitigate a postulated initiating event. And a functional safety group is uh, represented by a mitigation scenario. So here, basically, this is what I presented earlier. Uh, you have here a scenario that, um, that, has, that, uh, that displays all the systems that are, that are involved in the mitigation scenario. So here are the gray vertical lines, are the systems. Uh, the gray boxes inside are the functions. And all the, uh, all the, the little uh, arrows between uh, the, the, the gray boxes are the functional interfaces. So here, it allows us to, to describe a scenario to capture functional performance, constraints requirements uh, uh, linked to a given scenario. And now let's talk about traceability. So here, you, will have a, you, you can find a traceability map that allows to, to check how how our fundamental safety functions are implemented in safety feature groups, which are then derived in safety features and support safety features up to uh, the, the equipments. Uh, so it's a very nice way to, to, to check how high-level high level concepts are covered by uh, logical elements. So to conclude here, uh, so these representations uh, are somehow engineering deliverables, all right? So they must be challenged during dedicated gate reviews, during the design, and in order to provide the right inputs for the design activities. So these MBSC activities are really the starting point uh, for the digital continuity in the virtual twin. So once we have created the architecture in Katia Magic, actually we have created this PBS that we have already seen, and, uh, but it's not over, and the thing is that in Katia Magic, we have no governance, okay? We have no workflow, no uh, change requests, and so on. So we have to move the data into the 3D experience platform, where we will reuse every capabilities offered by the, by the platform, by the PLM, and we will apply, okay, change request, uh, life cycle, configuration, and so on. Moreover, when, once we have moved this data in the platform, we can use other applications from the platform. And this is, these are some examples we have. And we will start the, the detailed design, such as uh, the piping, enfin the, the fluidic uh, architecture that I will present later. Um, and we can also do the, the traceability and ensure the digital continuity. And so we use Katia Magic for the first part, okay, for what we call the model-based system engineering, where we will refine requirements, work on the architecture, and then we move to the model-based design in the platform, and we have done, we have created several um, fluidic uh, architectures, so the PFD first and the PNID, 
And we have uh, also created the 3D part, so vi the virtual twin of uh, uh, our plant. And of course, yeah, with each step, we keep the traceability to ensure the digital continuity. And I will show in the video how we have done that. So we start uh, from the grid, okay, from Incatia Magic, and now we focus on the architecture of our uh, RCCS. Okay, so it's a very high-level architecture, no, not a lot of details, but it's important because we have one level of architecture, enfin, one level of abstraction in Katia Magic. Then we move in the platform. Here we have um, uh, transformed, we have moved the data from Katia Magic to what we call the logical level, logical design in the platform. And we have kept everything that has been designed before. And these logical elements from the platform can be reused then for other disciplines. Okay, it can be mechanical. Here we used, uh, we created a process flow diagram. We use the same element. We just give more uh, details. We, we create what we call facet on each logical element, and we give the properties of uh, the specific. Uh, for, for example, if we have a pump, etc., we can give the specific uh, characteristics of the element. Okay, and here again, it, it was very close to what we did in Katia Magic, but we had already gained. Um, but we had more details, we had the pump. Now we are moved to the next step, which is the PNID, where we have uh, almost everything, the valves and so on. And so again, we are using the same kind of element from the platform. And I said that we have gone one step further and we created the, the virtual twin of the plant. And this is what we, we see here, where we have uh, not only created the RCCS in 3D, but uh, the, the whole plant. Um, Okay, and so, so the, con the concrete and um, the exchanger and so on. Yeah. And I said that we have, we have kept the traceability and that we are, we are not duplicating data. We are using the same data. And I can, we try to prove it here. Just by using the PNID diagram we used before, we can select, we can browse, explore uh, the 3D mockup, okay, the virtual screen. Because everything is connected, okay? Every 3D element, 3D parts is connected to a logical element we created before. And we, we have, so we did that from Katia Magic, so from the safety requirement, the safety analysis up to the 3D uh, part. So we have also this kind of view where we uh, will. Um, Analysis, analyze the impact, okay, because everything is connected. So if I want to know uh, what I, I need to change, what I need to modify because I, I have a new safety constraint, I can see it, okay. So I, we have um, this view that shows all the connection, the end to end connection, and uh, we can just use it also to parse, okay. Again, we are uh, um, displaying Katia Magic elements, then. Um, so here, this is the impact analysis view, where we have at the bottom, at the top left, the um, safety uh, element, and uh, on the right, the 3D part of our virtual chain. OK, so let's wrap up this demonstration with three uh, main key messages. So what you just saw is how we managed the integration of some safety specificities in functional analysis and how these have been derived uh, in the physical architecture and 3D mockup. So to do that, uh, we have developed a specific plugin in Katia Magic, which encompasses safety-related objects and concepts uh, based on nuclear engineering knowledge. And finally, we have shown that how design activities are structured by system architecting process and how we can use the 3D experience platform as a collaborative uh, platform and single source of truth as well. So thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Benjamin. So um, I know better understand what, uh, what is a virtual twin in the conceptual design phase and uh, how you can address uh, safety concerns with model-based system engineering and um, 3D experience. So to wrap up, um, as you have seen, setting an engineering collaboration platform is key, but it's not efficient, it's not sufficient to build and benefit from a virtual twin. You have to set up structuring processes like requirement safety analysis, but you have also have to tailor these key processes, business processes, to take into account the specificities of the nuclear industry. 
and a system and a system can really jointly help you define and build these processes and your own virtual twin.